Hello everybody, today I'm going to give you 12 reasons why you should shine your shoes, okay? So let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of five. My shoe collection. Some stains there. Get a nice lather. Here is the finished product. I'm not a professional. How tight this is though. A pair of Allen Edmonds torn apart. That to me is a proper mirror shine. So here it goes. And here they are finished up. Okay, everybody, so today's video is about 12 reasons why you should shine your shoes. So let's just jump right into this, okay? Uh, reason number one, I mean, I have to say this, it's, it's pretty obvious, but the reason number one is your shoes will look better, okay? Uh, if I left that one out, obviously, you, you know, um, I have to include that even though it's the most obvious as a nose on your face, okay? So reason number one, it just will make your shoes look better. And by the way, all the shots that you're going to see here are before and afters on shoes that I've personally polished up, okay? Uh, reason number two is the shoes will last longer. Because remember, when you put polish on shoes, a good portion of what you're putting on is wax. Uh, and there are also, depending on the type of shoe polish, you use nutrients uh, you know, in that polish. But that wax is going to put a protective coating on the shoes. And what you'll see is, you know, between shoe trees and polishing your shoes, so the, the, those are the two absolute best things you can do to make your shoes last longer. Okay? Reason number three, the leather, and this goes along with the number two, the leather will be more water and salt resistant. Now, if you live in a tropical climate, you may not even know this, but if you live in an area where there is snow, um, some form of salt, I think it could be sodium chloride or, you know, a, a variety of other, um, I think they use other compounds as well, but some forms of salt are used to put onto the snow and slush to melt it. And that stuff, you get this salt water, basically, that your shoes get exposed to, and it is horrible for them, you know? So that's why around here, in the wintertime, I wear galoshes, right? You know, over boots. But the, the a great thing that it does is you nourish the leather, and it'll make them much, much more waltz, uh, water and salt resistant, okay? So that's another great reason you should polish your shoes, right? Now, reason number four is the leather will stay, as this is kind of related to the last uh, comment, will stay better hydrated and better nourished. Now, nourishing the leather, remember, leather is, it was, I should say, the skin generally of a cow. A shell cordovan comes from a horse, and obviously there's exotic skins. But generally what you're talking about is calf skin leather, and it's usually going to come from more like the, the back area on shoes. But what I'm saying is this is or was the skin of an animal. And just like if you expose your skin, you know, to the elements every day and it got drier and drier, obviously there's nothing to replenish those nourishments from underneath. So we have to put those things back in, okay? So the leather will stay better hydrated and nourished. Reason number five, you'll detect... Uh, the need for minor repairs earlier, you know? So let me show you what I mean by this. So for example, what I mean by that is that let's just take, for example, these heel tacks if you use them. Well, when you're polishing your shoes, you may start to notice like this one, oh, it's starting to wear through, okay? You know, so maybe after, you know, the next, uh, uh, you know, two, three, four wears, I'm gonna replace that or go ahead and replace them now. You know, or maybe you see, here's another big one, you know, shoes that have replaceable top lifts, you know, where the, the top lift itself can be replaced. Like here, if you're gonna see the thickness of it, it's not very thick. You wanna make sure that it gets replaced before, and I'll show you an example here of a, you know, a bad one. You wanna make sure it's replaced before you wear into the heel base, okay? So if you're polishing your shoes, then you're gonna take notice of those kinds of things, right? You know, so you'll detect the need for minor repairs much earlier. Maybe you'll see that your shoelaces are frayed. You know, maybe you see, you know, you know, some other different things that need attention. Because when your shoe is six foot, six foot away from your foot, you know, when you're putting them on, in the law of the familiar kicks, and you're not going to really notice these little minor changes all the time. So when you're polishing them, you basically, you know, you're going to be doing an inspection of the entire shoe the whole way around. Does that make sense? Okay. So reason number six, you'll communicate to the world that you pay attention to details. When you see things that are really great, it's generally not one thing. So for example, a great paint job on a car is not just the paint, it's the bodywork, it's the details where the window's removed, you know, so the paint goes around the edges. You know, it's a, it's a hundred little things that come together. So when you're dressed, what makes you look great? Is your shirt pressed? Does it fit right? You know, is your, your, your tie knot? Do you have the collar stays in so your collars are straight? Are your shoes polished, right? Do you have a good spit shine on the toe caps? Did you put edge dressing on the edge of the soles? Are the heels polished, right? The, the, the back of the heel. So then you put all these details together and people won't even really realize why you look great, but they'll say, man, you look sharp. Well, you know, it's 10, 15, 20 little details that, that come together. So, you know, you're basically communicating to the world that you pay attention to details, okay? 
Now, number seven, here's another one. You'll nip bad habits in the bud. Now, here's what I mean by that. If I look at some of my shoes, um, I started to realize, and I'm not as bad on them, but you see there, the scuffing, and this is on the outside of the right heel, okay? Um, so if you see repeated damage in one certain location, what I figured out over the years is one thing I was doing was my big long feet. I would really nick up the front of the shoes really bad. So what I was doing was when I was reaching a staircase, I was kind of letting the shoe hit the staircase and I was not paying attention to how I was walking. Um, and I think what I still sometimes do with these is when I sit in an office chair, I kind of wiggle my foot and my foot is, you know, scuffing along the edge of the chair while I wiggle it. So what you're going to see is you're going to start to nip those bad habits. And then, so what I started to do was I was conscious when I would go upstairs, I would be a little more, just a little bit more deliberate with the way I walked, if that makes sense. Okay. So you start to nip bad habits in the bud. You know, um, I know somebody who still does this and uh, um, I'll try to show you a picture here, but basically it's the outside um, actually be the, the, the outside of the right shoe. It took me a long time to figure out what this person was doing is on the outside of the right heel only, the shoe was worn so badly that leather itself was worn through the color. And I'd, you know, I'd polish the shoes for him and, you know, I'm like, what are you doing? We're just the right side of the right shoe. We're driving down the road. And I watched him when he, um, I think he either had the cruise control on, but for some reason, when he had his foot off the gas, basically what he was doing was he was rolling his foot onto the side and resting the outside upper of the shoe okay on the carpeting of his shoe now of course when you know your carpeting gets dirty it has dirt and grime into it so basically it was acting like sandpaper and wearing right through the leather you know the coloring on the shoe upper so you know you'll knit bad habits uh, you know in the bud number eight it gets you in the habit of caring for and maintaining your stuff. Especially in this day and age, it's very easy to have like a, you know, a throwaway society. Um, and I think that's something when you mature and you become a gentleman and you gain wisdom, you start to maintain and care for stuff instead of always, uh, you know, destroying things and having to get new. And, you know, it's a short term focus, life focus versus a long term life focus. And you start to understand the rule of cause and effect. Oh, my actions today created pain, you know, a year or two or three down the road. So what this just does it starts a mental shift in the way you look at the world and you start caring for and maintaining stuff and stuff lasts longer you know and that it can spill over into other areas of your life your diet you know and your relationships and the way you talk and, and it can have a spillover effect okay right so i'm not trying to say polishing your shoes you know will change your life but i think it's part of a bigger picture okay number nine it'll save you money take care of your stuff and it'll last a lot longer uh, you know, I'm seeing multiple times, you know, shoes, people are ready to throw away shoes or just polish them and they look almost new and they're like, wow, I can't believe it, you know. So it's just going to save you money in the long run, right? R long run if you're willing to take care of your stuff, okay? Number 10, here's a great one for me. I think it's therapeutic. I think it relieves stress. Uh, I got the same thing, like, you know, the way I worked on cars when I do body work, you know, and some mechanics hate the body work because it's, you know, like they say it's tedious and long, but I love it. Well, especially spit shining the toe caps, you know, you just kind of zone in, you know, you just zone in into that little two square inch area of the world and then everything else melts away, no matter what's going on in my life. You know, I know that this thing can be under my control, you know, um, and then I can create something beautiful. And that to me is very therapeutic. That to me is a healthy outlet. It's creative. It's just something I love to do, you know, that no matter what else is going on in my life, you know, if I can pick up a pair of shoes and polish them to a, you know, amazing shine, mm, you know, that's going to be something for me that's, a, you know, a good creative outlet. Um, um, uh, there, there's a person, uh, like him or hate him, Ben Shapiro, he said something interesting. He said, men tend to uh, either be creating things or destroying things, you know, so we have this energy that has to go into something, you, you, you know, and uh, I think this is a healthy outlet it's to take that energy and put into creating something beautiful, right? Um, number 11, it's a tradition that needs to be passed on to the next generation, right? It's a tradition that needs to be passed on to the next generation. So as materials advance, obviously we're getting more and more shoes that are made of, uh, you know, artificial materials and the shoes become more throwaway as cars have become, but there's still always going to be hot rods. There's still always going to be fine shoes made of, you know, calf skin, full grain aniline leather, right? So I think this is just a tradition, a time honored tradition that's been around for hundreds of years, uh, you know, right? Uh, we, we know the Oxfords go back to the early 1800s, so hundreds of years 
you know, this tradition is something that I learned it from my father, you know, then of course there's other people, YouTube channels that, uh, you know, ele elevated my game. But where I first learned to polish shoes was from my father. And I think this is something that needs to be transferred. I think it's really amazing when you show a young person how to shine their shoes. Sometimes they're just blown away. They didn't, you know, really know there actually was such a thing. And it's a beautiful thing when they latch onto it and they start to elevate their shoe game. So, right. So we got to, you know, train the next generation of gentlemen, right, from, you know, generation to generation. Now, uh, reason number 12, and I may do a separate whole video on this topic, but reason number 12, you'll learn to speak the secret language of successful people. One time I went to a business meeting. This was uh, early in my business career when I changed from working in engineering to finance. Okay, so I went from being behind a desk to being in a business where, you know, my image, how people perceived me became important, where in engineering it really was not, okay? And uh, one of my mentors, we went to a meeting where we kind of knew where people are at. In other words, you, you know, some of the people we knew were doing very well financially, you know, and other people, you know, were kind of newer or just, you know, average. But uh, he said, Bob, there's a correlation between how nice people's shoes are and their income. I'm like, what? And he goes, just, just watch. He goes, generally when people have really nice shoes, they're either in sales, a business executive, or a business owner. I'm like, what? So, and I started to pay attention to this meeting and I was looking at their shoes. And it's like, you know, it was, it was amazing because I was like, you could, you know, not that we should judge people, okay, because it's not our job to judge people. I think it's, you know, big man upstairs. But if you were to rank people from how nice their shoes were to, uh, you know, poor their shoes looked, okay, not just the, the, the polish of them, but also the style, you know. And then you were to, you know, put the people in order of how successful their businesses were. I mean, the two lists were almost the same. I'm not saying it's a hundred percent correlation because I'm sure somebody will comment here. Yeah, Steve Jobs, they're dressed like crap every day. And so did Mark Zuckerberg. And I get that. Okay. I'm saying there's a strong correlation, not a hundred percent correlation. So if you want to be successful, right? Another mentor told me you should dress like a million bucks until you have a million bucks. Then you can tell the world to go take a flying leap. Or another way he phrased it is you should dress like a million bucks until you have a million bucks. Then you can show up in a t-shirt and flip-flops. Okay? So, it's this little secret language. What you'll start to notice when you take care of your shoes is that you'll notice sharp people when they meet you. They'll often do this when they meet you. You'll see them. Hi, how are you? You shake your hand, and then immediately their eyes go psh, down, and they'll look to your, your feet. Um, you know, I've almost been made fun of by some people at my office when they figured out that I do this. They'll watch me meeting people, and they're like, "Dude, you check out other dudes' feet like some other guys check out other girls," you know? And they're kind of like, "Ah, oh, making fun." But I, I mean, it, you'll see it happen. I remember one time, fairly early after I had started to latch onto this concept, um, somebody said, "Hey, man, there's a really sharp guy, VP, da 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 da," you, and I need to introduce him to you. I'm like, "Crap." You know, my shoes need help. I always keep a shoe shine, emergency shoe shine kit at my office. So I went in there, you know, 30 minutes before he's scheduled to come in and I'm polishing my shoes up and the guy's like, what are you doing? I gotta make sure my shoes are on point. Lo and behold, I shook the guy's hand and then I was talking to the person introducing me and I could see out of the corner of my eye, boom, his eyes went straight down to my feet, were checking out my shoes. And when I looked back at him, his eyes came right back up, you know? And the, the other associates saw it. So it's like the secret language, uh, you know, that I think the people on the outside just don't know this entire l language, so to speak, exists, okay, of successful people. So there's my 12 reasons you should shine your shoes. I'm trying to keep this uh, in a, a format that's a shareable length. So let's get the word out there. And hopefully this inspires at least one or two or three people out there that you know to start improving their shoe game, okay? Thank you very much for watching. I've got a lot of other videos, mostly shoe related, a shoe care and you know things like that. So go ahead and check out my channel if you'd like. And God bless you guys and have an amazing day.